Do you hate it when your microphone pops and you get those gross mouth clicks on your microphone? Well, we're gonna show you how to solve that and many other issues on this episode of Mailbag. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. Let's get started. This question comes in from Robert and that is this. What are the best ways to eliminate cloth noise when hiding a lob under a shirt or other clothing? I'm heartbroken because you haven't watched a bunch of our other videos where we cover this topic. Uh, I'll link them up here. The idea is reduce friction. Cloth noise is all friction. If we can reduce that some way, somehow, we're gonna do that method. What you can always do is get yourself something like Ursa Foamies, right coat undercovers, right coat overcovers, uh, classic old moleskin. And what you're gonna do is some kind of create a shock mount absorber device around your lavalier. Reason why I can't go into super details in your question is what kind of cloth are we dealing with? That's a different method. Where is it placed on the body? Well, that might be a different method. What you're wanting is gonna be what I'm gonna drop down in that comment section below as an answer directly for you. It's gonna be a link to a bunch of our other videos and it's gonna answer all of this. Uh, so hopefully that's a much better answer than what I can do in about a minute. Next question is from Libelats. That's the best I'm gonna do. How does the inverse square law relate to how close your microphone should be at an actor's voice? Inverse square law says, when I double the distance between two points and one point is a radius, as I double the distance of the two devices, if I go from here to here, this is now one fourth, not half, it is one fourth the gain volume structure as it was here. So how does that then relate to a actor's voice. So if you were here with a microphone and I were to pull that microphone double back, my voice in the VU meter will be one fourth of where it was, where it was originally placed. Now that is all to say, none of it matters. You're gonna place that microphone as close to your actor as you can do the frame line so if it's a wide shot, you're gonna put it as far uh, you know, away as it needs to be, but as close as you're allowed to without dipping in the frame. And for their close up, you're gonna pull it in as close as possible. And you're always gonna do that because you want the best signal to noise ratio. Signal being the actor's mouth. The noise, that's all the stuff going on in the background of your scene. Whatever gives me the best signal to noise ratio is what I want. And I can always then dial it in and in post to come down if I need to come down, come up if I need to come up. There is some direction to inverse square law in terms of mic placement. The answer should always be though, get as close as possible. We always do what's best for the actual scene at play, not the theoretical science of the world of sound, if that makes sense. How do you guys prevent those unwanted mouth clicks and pops when interviewing people with either a shotgun or lavs. Well, let's talk about what is a mouth click, and that's this. It's the wetness of your mouth uh, pulling apart and vibrating things like your cheek muscles and your tongue and things like that. That's a mouth click. Funny enough, if you hydrate more, you get them more often. If you're dehydrated or hungover from drinking the night before, you don't have them. In terms of pops, that is plosives, that is your B's, your P's, that's the breath of air of our heavy breathers like myself blowing into the microphone when we pop our audio. What you can do there, of course, foam windscreen on your microphone, foamy on the lav, but what you can also do is bring the microphone off a little bit so it's not in the direct line of the actual breath air. The thing with mouth clicks though, the way you get rid of it so it doesn't happen in the edit, so much so that like you think they don't happen because there's skills behind it, is the magic of post-production. So in the Adobe Audition Suite, uh, I think it's called Auto Heal, you're gonna heal the little pops and cracks and everything like that. It's gonna redraw the waveforms and it's gonna fix it. So that is it. It's gonna be a lot of post-production and good mic placement. Our next question is from Clark and it goes like this. When should you use a lavalier mic or boom mic for interviews? Why not both? I mean, if you think about it, by asking the question, uh, should I use a lav, should I use a boom, you are automatically limiting your potential in post-production. Sometimes the lav may have a little bit more room than the boom, but you wanna dial that in so that you have some presence because maybe there's some activity going on in the background that the shotgun didn't pick up on, right? So picture a carnival. You have all the rides, you have all the noise, but if I was doing a boom on a person and did an interview, it's gonna sound like that person's being interviewed in a vacuum almost. But an omnidirectional lavalier may pick up some of that fun background noise. 
So in post, I can either select one or the other, or I can mix both together maybe a little bit to kind of highlight the person's voice, but dial in some of my ambient sounds. So really the short answer is you should do both. In post, you're gonna make an educated kind of decision based on what you think sounds best for the scene that you ended up shooting, but don't try to go in with the mindset that you should limit yourself. And again, you may be in a situation where you brought only a lav, walk up to someone and they go, oh, I don't wear lavs. You can't touch me. Oh, well I don't have a boom. That's why you bring both. I always have a backup. What would you recommend for on-set ADR performances when the actors are unable to make a separate studio date in a controlled environment? Blankets, portable booth, etc. One, the term on-set ADR, we call these wild lines. So you're gonna record them with the exact same microphone you recorded the actual scene with, but you're gonna have them say it off camera, right? So. It's a wild line because I can toss it in. Either they're gonna do it during the reaction shot so their mouth isn't moving and they can take the line that you took and throw it into the scene, or they're gonna try to match it with the person's mouth. But they're called wild lines. So let's say you need to do some quick stuff with the actor. Take them into a room roughly the same size as the original room, someplace quiet. You're gonna have them say their lines of dialogue over and maybe a little bit faster, maybe a little bit slower, and then you're gonna have them do it over again. You're gonna go back and forth, and you're gonna do it like maybe five, six times per line. The editor then will choose which line from the actor they're gonna grab. In terms of things like blankets or portable booths, that's gonna make a dead room kind of sound. That's not gonna sound like the actual environment, and that's when you're gonna end up with that Hallmark ADR effect where you go, ooh, that was a fake line. So wire lines are great, don't try to record them in a booth. Try to record them in a natural environment so you get natural reverb because your post team may have to like replicate all that if you go too crazy with the sound blankets. That's gonna wrap it up for us. That's another mailbag in the can. I'm Andrew from Deity Microphones. You promise you're gonna subscribe and I'm gonna thank you for watching.